morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know, like subscribe, and share to help support the channel. Pick up your free trial copy of the Currency Exchange Planner and check out the all-new Currency Exchange Planner Companion, voted the number one pre- and post rv planning tool for the dinar and cryptocurrency communities. Also, download your free blockchain-based secure Brave browser, and get paid in crypto to surf the internet today. You can find the links to these and other valuable sites in the description below. Before we get started I would like to mention, for about a year now I have been informing everyone that Iraq will be transitioning to a cashless society. Do not worry about your physical denominations you hold, this transition will take up to 5 years to complete. The hard currency and the digital currency will coexist during the transition just like your physical US dollars will coexist along with the new digital dollar that is coming. We are entering into exciting times indeed with a lot of financial changes occurring all at once, the coincidence is uncanny, almost like it was meant to happen this way. On that note, let us get started. First article of interest for today, Al Adder. In light of the corona crisis, banks must start with blockchain technology. Called for a member of the Council for Economic God Dear Adder, Saturday, to the importance of the digital exchange of banking in light of the crisis and beyond, stressing the importance of the transfer of funds digitally not a land without resorting to traffic banks, said Adder. In a statement received, Scales News, copy of it, it is important to establish, I know your customer, electronic platform that adopts blockchain technology which is known in Arabic as blockchain, is the data that is stored and preserved through a decentralized network of computers. Al Adder added, this facilitates technology for corporate customers to open financial accounts and enhance recognition capabilities the customer is assisted by the banks and this will help to enhance the banking experience of the customers and facilitate the organizational processes associated with them through the use of technologies called blockchain. Al Adder indicated that this matter contributes to establishing a new global standard in banking service technology inside Iraq. Next article of interest. Cash Edition Doctor Appearance of Mohammed Saleh when the government or the public finances ultimately resort to the central bank as the currency issuing bank, in order to finance the budget deficit and the inflationary cash instrument, this comes mostly through the mechanism of the central bank's acceptance of treasury transfers as a tool to finance internal public debt in exchange for the issued cash, and the case will continue if the matter begins until the foreign reserve of the central bank is worn out due to the increasing demand in the new dinar for the old dollar i.e., accumulated foreign reserves, which at the same time represents a derivative demand for foreign goods, services and benefits, especially when the domestic productive energy functions are a situation of flexibility. Then the country will enter into the swirls of inflationary expectations and the turbulence of the functions of demand itself and turn them into high levels due to a high commodity demand surplus in front of scarcity of supply or its failure to meet demand or total spending, especially when commodity stocks are depleted and its compensation is reduced by passing time. And this happens in the same way as what happened after 1990 even if it was partially caused by severe inflationary phenomena represented in the deterioration of the value of the currency to three decimal places and the low standard of living together. Therefore, relying on the idea of issuing cash as an alternative financing method for real oil revenues to cover the government's financial deficit requires a serious decision taken by the Council of Ministers and Representatives and the conviction of the monetary authority starting with the fact that it requires amending Article 26 of the Central Bank Law No. 56 of 2004 which explicitly provides for the prohibition of government lending, that what follows, as we mentioned, is a deterioration in the value of the currency, especially when overfunding government expenditures through this easy money method, whether in financing the revenue deficit or deficit government expenditure. Next article of interest. Al Rafidain. Some departments received their salaries manually and did not do the MasterCard. Rafa Dane Bank confirmed, on Saturday, 
that some of the State Departments have not activated the MasterCard card that they received from the bank after they settled the salaries of their employees on the bank. The media office of the bank said in a statement, which received slash information slash a copy of it, that some departments received the MasterCard after the bank completed with it all the procedures related to the process of resettlement but it kept this electronic card and did not proceed to activate it and preferred to keep the old mechanism in receiving the monthly salary manually. The bank called the relevant departments to accelerate the address of the bank's general administration with the need to activate these cards so that the monthly salary is paid electronically to them like their peers from other departments, especially in light of the conditions the country is currently living in due to the coronavirus and the need to leave the manual deal and go towards electronic cash. Next article of interest. America specifies the members of its delegation that will negotiate with Iraq. U.S. Assistant Secretary of State David Shanker revealed, on Saturday, that Washington continues to prepare for a new round of strategic dialogue with Iraq, while members of the negotiating delegation identified, and Shanker said, in a press statement, that the Trump administration is continuing its preparations to hold a new round from the strategic dialogue with Iraq announced by Minister Mike Pompeo, at the beginning of this week, fixing its date in the middle of next June. He added, the American administration will form a delegation headed by Ambassador David Hill, and will include members from several ministries, including the Treasury and Defense and others. Shinker said, Baghdad needs to take convincing steps, if it is establishing a strategic partnership with Washington calling on Iraqi officials to take steps that include providing protection for the coalition forces, in case they want these forces to remain. Next article of interest. Report. Transparency is the best solution. Transparency on critical economic issues such as public debt and employment is the best solution to drive growth and boost confidence in governments in the MENA region, according to the latest regional economic report to the World Bank. The need for more transparency comes at a time when the MENA region is facing an unprecedented double shock due to the emerging coronavirus, COVID-19, pandemic and the collapse in oil prices. These shocks further slowed the already slow economic growth in the region, partly due to a lack of transparency in the data. The new report entitled, How Transparency Can Help the Middle East and North Africa, explains that estimates of the cost of the current crisis are unstable, because it is not possible to predict how the global economy, national policies and societies will react in light of the pandemic. Thus, cost estimates can vary within days. For example, the report explains how the proliferation of the new coronavirus, along with the collapse in oil prices, led to changes in private sector and World Bank expectations for growth in 2020. Until April 1, changes in expectations indicated that the cost to the East MENA reaches about 3.7% of the region's GDP in 2019, about $116 billion, compared to 2.1% as of March 19. Commenting on the report, Farid Bell Hodge, Vice President of the Middle East and North Africa region at the World Bank, said, The Middle East and North Africa region, more than any other region, faces two different but related shocks, the spread of the coronavirus and the collapse in oil prices. The World Bank is stepping up its efforts to help governments overcome these shocks and ensure that no one is left behind. Belha added, We must learn and change in order to give our citizens new hope. Transparency across the region can help achieve growth while enhancing confidence in governments in the years and decades to come. According to the new report, the coronavirus affects the countries of the region through four channels, namely, the deterioration of public health, the decline in global demand for goods and services produced by the region, the decrease in domestic supply and demand, and most importantly the decrease in oil prices. The collapse in oil prices directly affects oil exporters and indirectly oil importers, through low regional remittances, investment volumes, and capital flows. The report recommends that countries in the region respond to policies that go in two parallel steps, tackling the health emergency and associated economic downturns, 
and initiating reforms that have a largely transformative and neutral impact on the budget, such as debt transparency and the restructuring of state-owned enterprises. Commenting on the report, Rabba Arzaki, chief economist for the Middle East and North Africa at the World Bank, said, Investing in transparency now will break the cycle of mistrust and the absence of government accountability in the region. In addition to assessing the effects of these two shocks, the report examines the challenges in the region that preceded the crisis, most notably the slow growth. The authors estimate that if the growth of per capita GDP in the Middle East and North Africa was the same as that of the counterparts in the past two decades, the real per capita GDP in the region would have been at least 20% higher than it is today. The report stresses that much of the slow growth in the Middle East and North Africa is due to the lack of transparency. It is the only region where data and transparency capabilities have decreased since 2005. The low transparency in the Middle East and North Africa between 2005 and 2018 is linked to the expected loss of per capita income in the region, which ranges between 7% and 14%, said Daniel Lederman, deputy chief economist of the World Bank and lead author of the report. The report highlights two areas where a lack of transparency hinders reliable analyses of important issues. The lack of data transparency hinders reliable analyses of the sustainability of the debt burden in the region, which will be an important issue to consider after the crisis ends. Countries in the region vary widely in debt reporting standards, and World Bank economists and external analysts are unable to access vital information on many types of public debt. The unemployment and informal sector numbers in the region are ambiguous, because MENA countries rely on different definitions of employment. There is little consistency, both across the region and with international standards, which affects analyzes about the size of the informal sector and unemployment. On April 2, the World Bank announced a significant initial increase in support to Middle Eastern and North African countries. The World Bank Group is taking rapid and wide-ranging measures to help developing countries strengthen their response to the corona pandemic, strengthen disease surveillance, improve public health interventions, and help private sector companies continue their operations and sustain their staff. The group will provide up to $160 billion in financial resources over the next 15 months to help countries protect the poorest and most caring groups support businesses and promote economic recovery. Because of the corona pandemic, economic conditions in countries and regions are characterized by fluctuation and change on a daily basis. The analysis included in the report is based on the latest data available for each country as of April 1st. Hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more videos are posted. Be sure to check out the Denarian blog. Facebook and Twitter as I also update daily on those platforms as well. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded Currency Exchange Planner and check out the all-new Exchange Planner Companion. Use the promo code, the Denarian, to get 25% off of checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities, along with the mobile application added free for a limited time. The links to these and other invaluable websites are available in the description box below this video. Knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful. Over and out for now. The Denarian.